Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, it's a privilege for us to be here. My name is Diego, my wife Carla, and, and my daughter Cielo. Uh, yeah, it's so beautiful when you're driving here. I, I like it. It's, it looks like the promised land, you know, with the valley. And I was telling my wife how beautiful it is here. Uh, yeah, for us, it's, a, it's an honor to be here. You know, like uh, not many churches, they are open, and not many churches. They give you the microphone to share, you know, what you're doing. And like, uh, my wife can tell you what we do in Mexico. And uh, maybe next weekend we want to show you a video because we only bring the phone. But next weekend we can bring the computer and you see, you see what we're doing there. We basically, we work with, with fatherless kids, with the kids that are in, at risk. Like the mom, they are like in prostitution, or the parents, they are addicted to drugs. Unfortunately, we're living in a, in a fatherless generation, you know? Like you guys here, you are all overqualified to come and help us. Why? Because you, you are a father, you know? And for a father, you don't have to do much. You have to just be there for them, you know? When I work with the kids sometimes, I don't even talk about God. I just be there for them. I make sure to pick them up, make sure to, to have fun with them. You know, like, uh, yeah, that's what we're doing. And, uh, but thank you, John, for inviting us. And, uh, and it's funny how John, all the things that the people talk about John, all the things that they're moving. And then last year and a half, I have about three people approach me and say very not good things about John, you know? And that really bugs me. I had so much compassion for these people. Why? Because we talk about revival, you know? And no wonder revival is not arriving in this area. You know, we, we're supposed to be willing to sacrifice for each other. And there's so much division in the church, in the Western church. You know what I told them all the time? I told them, I told this to them. Oh, like John Abrams? I said to them, people have heroes in the faith. I told them, and for me, like John is my hero in the faith. How he walk and the fruit that is bearing, you know, all the things they've gone through. And like you guys have an amazing pastor, and also a very apostolic too. We want to bring him to Mexico. I think he's coming. <laughs> so this is my thing, like uh, next weekend I will be speaking about this. Like what is the mean to be willing to give the life for each other? It's, I didn't say that, it's in the Bible. You know, he gave the life for us. And while, when we do that, we set the table. It's like when you guys have FASPA. You know, you set the table for him to arrive. And after that, revival is not an event. Revival doesn't have to come and go. Revival has a name. The name is Jesus. You know? And, and if we, I believe in this, this is more church. You guys can bring revival to all this region. Seriously. Why? Just if we are willing to sacrifice for each other. And you know why? When, when the people said this thing about John, I was telling my wife, when I grew up, you had to be out of your mind to talk bad things about me and my family. You might don't exit the neighborhood. You know, they might kill you or something. And that was the, those are the bad, bad people. But as a fellow believers, you know, we turn our back and, and they stab you. And, and I know you guys are different, you know. And those, that's my message in this morning. I just want to leave you with that thing, you know, like a willing for to lay down our life for each other. And how, how that will look like. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, you want to keep preaching? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so like Diego said, we work with children out there, and actually it ends up being, um, you know, we went there to work with children, and then it turns out that we end up working with their families, I mean, their parents, and, you know, or their, whether it's a mom or a dad or whoever's in that family, if they're, they're still there. And um, so, yeah, so we've been doing that since we moved there in 2020. And I, who was here last year when we were sharing last year? Okay, great. So, yeah, and um, so, yeah, you saw that video. So basically, we continue with that. And the Lord led us into, um, led us out of one neighborhood because we felt it was very saturated with a lot of help already with missions and stuff. And so we moved into a <laughs> neighborhood and, um, which doesn't have anything there. There is a church there but um, they don't do anything with the children per se, it's more just like a service. So, um, so, so we ended up moving, and it's, a, it's actually the red light district, which is a very dark neighborhood, as you can imagine. Um, just a lot of brokenness. In, in just a few homes that we, we, we have started to connect with people there, I mean, it's just, you just, it's, it's overwhelming. So, but we know that God has brought us there and we know that there is, um, yeah, like Diego said, he wants to bring revival into this neighborhood as well and, you know, just through his life. And so anyway, so we've been doing that since we started there in about March and um, our big thing, and you can pray for this because I know you guys are a people of prayer. Um, we are looking to find a, a space there where we can meet with the kids Monday to Friday and also to, <coughs> you know, where the parents can meet us if we're doing prayer. Like um, one of the ladies, she actually had a spirit of death on her. She had shared with me stuff and I was like, oh, do you know that that's a, a, like a demonic thing, a spirit of death? And she's like, she goes, oh. And then I go, well, you, I go, if you want that delivered, you can um, and we can pray with you. But I mean, but if you get rid of it, then you have to fill it with the Holy Spirit, with Jesus. You can't just get rid of it, and then it'll just come back more, like in the scripture it says. So um, anyway, so she ended up, so we had to find a place, because we didn't really have a place, and we couldn't do it at our house, just because there were a lot of kids there and, and, you know, other stuff. So so anyways, they ended up finding a space. Up there. There's a YWAM base out there, so Diego and another guy, they, they ended up praying with her there. I was actually sick with COVID at the time. But anyway, so they ended up praying with her and stuff. But we just, we are just desperately wanting a space. It's just nice to have a space yeah. like this where, um, and in this case, <coughs> because it's so run down, like there's nothing to rent. Like everything is, um, there's things for sale, but we don't really feel like it, everything's just in shambles. So then you'd have to build and then that would be just, so we just felt, you know, we'd just like to rent and see how, if the community, how open the community is, which we feel it is, but we would like to just take that first step. So we've been praying for that space, So, but we haven't found, every time we've looked and looked, everything's just fallen through, fallen through, fallen through. And we definitely know, first of all, it seemed like the doors were wide open and we had this space at the community center. And as soon as we started, we started cleaning up one day, we were gonna get it ready, kind of this size. A lady that was in charge came in and said, you are not allowed to talk about God here. And she kicked us out and so we were trying to figure out ways to get back and then into the building through a connection that he has with a you know, relative that's in politics. But that was sitting on the counter and that wasn't moving in any way. So we just kept, we're like, then we knew like, oh, then we are supposed to be here because now there's these walls coming up and nobody's letting us in. Um, in or it's hard to find a space. So, so that's kind of our big prayer so that we can have sort of like a, yeah, whether it's discipleship, schooling, craft, like stuff to do with the kids, with their parents, that kind of thing. So that is something that we love prayer for. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so did you want, is there anything else to say? Oh yeah, oh. and yeah, and you guys are all invited to come and help us. Think about it. <laughs> I want to leave it there. It's nice weather. Nice weather. Hot. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's true. That's actually another prayer request of ours is that there would be people that would help us because it is us. And we had another couple, but they ended up, um, long story short, they ended up having to go um, or they're in another ministry right now um, just because that one pays and, and we don't pay them. Because, <laughs> But anyway, so we ended up, um, 
yeah, so we do need help. We do, we would love, we've been praying for that as well. So that's right, that's what, what Diego said. Mm -hmm. Diego, okay. Okay. So I'm gonna share a little something today. Um, I, my last name, my maiden name is Schellenberg, so it's got the Mennonite roots as well. And um, no. so, yeah, I, just, <coughs> I felt like I was asking the Lord what to share. I feel quite humbled to even be able to come here and share. I'm, I, you know, you can think, well, who am I to say anything? But then God's like, but I live in you. So it doesn't matter mm -hmm. who's up here. Anybody can be up here. Um, right? They, everybody has something in their heart from the Lord um, that you can share. So you don't have to be anything but with the Holy Spirit. So that's enough. Um, so yeah, so I just wanted to share a little thing here. Do you, do you get, do you, if I tell you to play a song at the end, is that possible to go on YouTube and play that or no? If not, that's okay. I just thought I would try and see. So, um, what? Is song? what? what song is it? Oh, uh, it's, uh, it, it's called, um, well, it's by Godfrey Bertil, Be Still and Know. Okay. Bertil, B-E-R-T-I-L. Anyway, um, yeah, so like I said, I, I, you know, grew up in the Mennonite church and, um, you know, always wanted to serve the Lord and um, all good things, right? <laughs> but sometimes you don't realize that um, you can just grow up and there's just a lot of, like, you wanting to do good things for the Lord, you wanting to serve, and, and it ends up just being about you right? Because you, you want to do what's good. And then if it doesn't work out or, oh no, like I did this wrong and oh, I, I screwed up here and oh, I, I did this bad and oh, I can do this good. Like, so really your, your eyes are always on, on you and what you're doing, right? Whether it's doing something good or doing something bad and you need to repent or, you know, and, and what happens is it's, it just becomes this vision. We call it look, gazing, navel, navel gazing, where you're looking at your, yourself and, and your eyes are not on the one that saved you or the one that deserves the glory and deserves the, the focus, but your eyes become on yourself. And so um, I just want to share a little bit of a journey we had here in, in, in Mexico, because sometimes you, you go to Mexico or you go, or sorry, you go into missions thinking, you know, you have your focus. I'm here to serve. I'm, we're going to work with the kids. We're going to work with, um, we want to help these families. We want to do all these good things, and, um, and yet God has a process he wants to do in you at the same time, right? Uh, and he knows our hearts, and he knows what needs to get done in our hearts. And so I feel like this last season that we were there, um, he, really, he really, no matter what comes your way, even if it's bad or good or whatever it is, um, it really comes from his hand because he wants to bring us into greater freedom, greater joy, greater... Um, revelation of who he is. And so um, as we walked through the journey, you know, January, February, we were encountering a lot of, um, what do you call it? Well, problems, but more like between us and other believers, right? Which, I, which is funny how that works, right? You think that your greatest, um, <coughs> what do you call it? The, per, the adversary or whatever, it would be something outside, right? Maybe it would be an unbeliever, or maybe it would be this or whatever, but it often comes from within the body, and that is really, really sad, and it's like what Diego said, and it's really the way that, I mean, look how Jesus got crucified, right? He got crucified by who? The religious leaders, and so there was a lot of things that were um, kind of thrown at me and Diego from, from, from this kind of thing, and it felt very, um, you just feel sad, you feel disappointed, you feel like why you have all these questions and um, and you just can get really down because you think you start to go well, well what is going on and you know you just get really distracted is really what it is so I ended up um, and because it was the very people that we were helping you know the very people that we were trying to serve were the very people that you know didn't didn't allow us to I guess if you want to call it that so I, I had called a friend and just, you know, sometimes you need an outsider's perspective. And this friend of mine is just super, well, she just walks in the fullness of, with God and she hears his voice. And, um, 
anyway, sometimes I just have to process and stuff. So I just shared with her a bunch of things and, and she said, you know, Carla, you know what I hear? I hear distraction. And she said, you need to keep your eyes on him. And she goes, you're a spirit. You're a spirit first and foremost. And so I knew when she, as she was speaking the words, like things just felt like they were dropping off of me, like they were, came with an anointing and a power. And um, I just wrote them down in my journal. And this was like, I don't know if it was May or something in there, April, May kind of thing. And I wrote them down and I was like, yes, you know, and she's like, you keep your eyes on him. And so I was like, and it just felt like it was just enough of just, I don't know if you've had that where somebody speaks a word or prays a prayer and you just feel like maybe you're down and all of a sudden you just feel that lift, like somebody just lifted you up out of the mud and it was just like this breaking thing off of you. And so that's how it felt in that moment. And, um, and then as time goes on, it, it, it just, it, it, you know, then you go back and then all of a sudden this thing keeps going back onto you again, right? And you, are, you struggle and you struggle. So anyway, um, yeah, so in, so beginning of June, or right before, in end of May, I had a lady come up to me and um, she's from the Wyoming base and she said, I was just in the street getting into our vehicle and she comes up to me and goes, Carla, I have a, um, I, was, I was worshiping my room and I had, I just have a word for you. I feel like the Lord gave me a picture for you. And I don't even know this lady very well. Like, I've hardly even spoken to her. And I'm like, really? Okay. And, you know, I'm kind of down. So this was, I felt like the Lord was just wanting to encourage me. And she's like, I said, I feel like I see God putting these big iron, um, I don't even know what they're called, but like on your shoulders, like, like a, almost like an armor thing. And um, I was like, okay. I'm like, thanks. <laughs> and, and that was that. And then, um, you know, and then, the days pass by, and all of a sudden, I. And then all of a sudden, I, I, um, in, I think shortly after that, I ended up getting really sick with with COVID. But I didn't know it was COVID at the time. I just was sick for a few days, and then it kept getting worse and worse. And I didn't think of it until Diego said it. And then, anyway, so as I'm sitting there, and, and I, I don't know if any of you've been sick with it. Maybe not because. Got John here and his prayer healing. And <laughs> but anyway, and I was in, in my room and, and I just was, I woke up one morning at really early and I just was sitting with the Lord and I, I started, um, I just started to, I was reading something that God, I had bought a while ago, but I ended up picking it up again. And I, as I read it, it, something really, really hit me so, so hard. And it was, it was just about receiving everything that comes to me as though from the hand of God. Everything that comes to me as though, um, like, can I surrender? Can I surrender everything, my ideas or my ideals or my, what I think, you know, life should look like or, or missions or whatever? Can I, can I surrender that and go, you know, God, I want to just leave that in your hands and, and you, like, I just trust that you're in it, no matter what it looks like. And because sometimes things don't look like what we, we hope it would look like, right? We get married or we... We have a, maybe we have a birthday party for ourselves or we do something or we go on a trip and it doesn't quite turn out the way we were hoping it would turn out. Or in our marriage, we're like, well, I didn't think this was what marriage was going to be like or whatever it is. And we have all these ideas that we, we expectations or ideals of what we think it should look like or what we hope it would, would be like. And then it doesn't happen that way. And it can happen the same thing when you go into missions. You go in there and going, oh, we're going to do this with the children. We're going to do this and we're going to you know, work together with these people and, and these guys and, you know, and we have these ideas and these, these hopes and then it doesn't happen that way. And God was asking me, he's like, can you, can you surrender that? Can you surrender all of that? And just trust me that I'm in everything. And um, so as I sat there, I just felt like I just literally, and you know when things are not in your head, but they're in your heart, right? Like we don't, when we receive Jesus and we believe in him, it doesn't happen here. It has to happen here. If it doesn't happen here, then life just continues on the same. But when it happens, I mean, if it doesn't happen, yeah, it happens to happen here. And so I was sitting in the chair, and I just started weeping, and I just thought, God, however you want it, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do with what we're in, with, with missions, whatever you want to do with me, I don't care, as long as I have you. And um, I just felt like this deep, 
I don't know how to explain it. It was almost like you, when you just give up, you're like, I just give up, but you're, you're content to give up. You're not struggling anymore. And um, I just lay that all down. And then I just felt like God started, I just started to have a song in my heart. And I began to sing, um, you know, the song, um, I will enter his courts with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. So I start singing this song. And as I'm singing it, I, um, I just feel like there's something like getting washed over me. And, and that comes from Psalm, Psalm 100, if, if you don't know. And, you, and it's like, and then it's sometimes things happen in your heart. You can't explain them in your mind. So you know there's things going on, but you don't really have, you don't have a way to explain it. But I felt like in the surrender, and, and then this song came up, and I just began to be thankful. And, and there was, yeah, just this thankfulness. And I'm, I'm sick. Like, I'm just sitting there, like, you know, you're barely, I'm walking with a, you know, walking down the stairs, just holding on the rail. But I'm just like, I'm just singing. And, and I get downstairs, and I'm just singing, and I'm singing all day, and it's just coming from my heart. It's not a head thing. It was a heart thing. And I just felt like this surrender that was just like, um, yeah, it was just heartfelt. Like, I don't care at all anymore about my life. Like, I didn't care even if I was going to die. I was just that, that full surrender that I'm like, he's in everything. He's going to, you know, just my life, I put my life in his hands. And um, whatever, whatever it will look like, you know. And, and then I, I started as in, this, in this whole day process where I'm, I'm singing this and I'm just feeling my heart is coming alive. I start to feel like, I just get this excitement and joy. So this joy starts to overcome. And again, like I say, it's not something that you manufacture or that you go, oh, I'm gonna be joyful, I'm gonna jump and down, up and down. Um, what happened was just a few days before that, I saw a guy that was visiting the base, Wyoming base, and he was, we were worshiping in the, in the hall, like in the worship hall. And I had come in and, and I, again, I wasn't feeling that good that day. Um, this was just a few days before this happened. And I remember that guy came in, and he was, uh, he was the speaker of that week. And he was jumping for joy, and, but I could tell it was sincere. Just like when I walked in the door, I walked, we walked in this door, and I saw these people, you guys were jumping and cheering and from your heart. And I was like, oh, and I just felt like, like these people are alive. Like they're excited about God. And so I see this guy, and he's jumping for joy, and I'm just like, God, I want that. I want that. I don't want, like, what am I? I'm sitting here, and I'm... I'm barely hanging on by a thread in the sense of like emotionally, mentally, I'm beaten down, I'm tired of, you know, the attacks of, of the lies that you, you know, you can get beaten down when people are, are misunderstanding you and saying these things about you and accusing you and, you know, you can really just like sit there, you know, and just feel like frustrated and hurt. And I was like, that guy's just jumping for joy because he's in you, he's wrapped, his, he's wrapped in you, like he's not... I don't know where he came from. I just know he's really, truly in his heart excited for, for God. And, and I was like, that's, that's what I want, you know? And I remember that, that prayer. I was, like, I was like, I could dance and do this, but I would be like, I'm faking it, right? And I was like, I don't want to fake it. I don't want to fake it. And, and um, so that, that was just a few days prior to this, this, this thing that happened to me. It was on a Thursday morning. And the other thing was on a Monday. So I felt like it was this thing that started to break off of me where I was like, and I just realized in the surrender, like joy comes through surrender. Like it really does. As you surrender and going, God, whatever you have for me, um, like I, I, thankfulness and joy come out of it because you start to let go of what your ideals are or your ideas or what you want. Um, and you start to go, God, what do you want? What do you see? And, and you aren't actually, you let go of what you, the thing that you're trying to create, there's an image or a idea or a life or that you're trying to make in God, right? You may, it's good. Maybe it's a good thing, but it's good is the enemy of the best and the best is him. And so it was laying all that down and going, okay, I'm one with you, Father. So however you see fit, I'm one with you. And, and so in that, so as I began to worship him that whole day, I really started to like lose all fear of man. <laughs> and, Amen. <laughs> yeah, it was it was funny because 
so I'm, I'm fully sick and everything, and I'm, I go outside because I just need some vitamin D, you know, through the sun. And I see this, this Mexican guy there, he's, you know, maybe 19 years old. I don't care. I just go up to him and I, I start telling him what I, whatever I felt, because I felt like he's highlighted to me. So I was like, I'm just trusting Holy Spirit. And I was just fully being led by the Spirit. Then I felt like I was going to go, okay, I'm going to go down. I, I needed some, like, just sun and sit, put my, maybe put my feet in the water. So I asked Jesus, is it okay if I go down to the water? Just because I was so weak, I didn't even know how I would make it there and back. And I, I just felt, yeah, go, go. So I went, you know, went down to the water. Oh, I, I got changed in, you know, my swimsuit. I thought, just in case, you know, you fall in accidentally. So I go into, into the water, and I just, I just, there's a freedom that I had never felt um, ever in my life. And it was literally, I can't even describe it, because it didn't happen out of here, and it wasn't a plan, but it was like, in the weakest, worst spot, but then just being honest with the Lord and like laying it down and then leading this, you know, just this thankfulness and this joy came and, and like I say, fear of man left and I ended up, um, yeah, so I'm going in the water and these kids come start talking to me and, I, and I'm, not, I'm sick, so I don't really want to like, you know, I'm not really there to engage too much. But they start talking to me, and they're like, oh, where are you from? You know, in Spanish, because they're little Mexican kids. And I, and they're, what language do you speak? And I speak, I said, I speak Japanese, Chinese. I was just joking with them, right? I don't speak any of that. But they said, oh, tell me a word. And then the funny thing is I would know, like, one word in each of those languages that I said. So we were just <laughs> had fun. And then I said to them, um, and then out of nowhere, out of nowhere, the one kid goes, um, goes, do you know that, um, do you know, no, how do they say it? Oh, do you know that, that, that God lives in heaven? And I said, do you know that God lives in me? Or something, I can't remember exactly what the thing was. And, and, then, um, and then they just look at me, they start laughing, and then they start asking me stuff like, um, do, you know that the, do you know that the world's gonna end, that it's gonna explode? They're telling me this, you know? And I said, who cares? I said, I have eternity living in me. And then they start laughing again. But it felt like, I mean, it was like I was drunk, you know? And, <laughs> and I was just like, I just didn't care. And I felt this joy. The joy and the fear of man was gone. And um, yeah, and so in the end, you know, there was all these other things that happened in that day where it was just glorious, really. I was like, wow, this is freeing if I could live like this all the time. So anyways, the next day comes, and all of a sudden I find that I'm, like, kind of, you know, grouchy again. And I was like, whoa, what's happening? Like, I felt like this incredible joy and bliss all day. I couldn't even describe it the day before. And so I asked Holy Spirit, I'm like, what is this? And, um, and he's like, well, like, that was living in the Spirit, being led by the Spirit, and now you're not. <laughs> like, you know, you're not, you're not, not that you don't have the Spirit, but you're not surrendering to Him, or you're not... Um, yeah, I don't even know. And I, and I was like, oh, and then I want to get back there. And then that's when God was showing me, no, you don't strive to get anywhere. You don't try to get there. I'm already in you. It, it just is. It just is. There's no working for it. There's no, you know, you're done with work. Like, you're just in rest, and it's already been given. And so I'm like, okay, so then what? It's like, well, then it just is. Then you just trust me. So you trust him that he will do it in you. And that's what it says in Galatians. And so, um, so I was like, okay, and then I just let it go. And then on the Saturday morning, I get up at, or I woke up at four in the morning, and I'm just sitting again with the Lord, and He begins to like, oh, because I was again, I was, I had heard something else that one of these people that had, you know, that had beforehand were um, spoke against us or whatever, and I heard something again through the grapevine. And I, and I said to the Lord, Lord, like, how, how do I, um, like, how do I not be offended? How do I forgive this? Like, how do I not let this dictate, you know, my joy or my everything? And, and then I heard him so clearly. And he's like, um, he just said, only the soul gets offended and the spirit doesn't. And, and in that instant, yeah, and in that instant, he was realizing because, like, my, all these things started to come, come to me was, we, the, we are spirit, right? And we have the Holy Spirit, and that's our true identity, right? So our body, we have our bodies, and, you know, we mess up and all those kind of things. But in the spirit, we are perfect. And really, the spirit is, 
you know, the more powerful than everything, right? Like as we live in the spirit and be led by the spirit, then the soul gets, the soul gets to go under the spirits and, you know, that becomes the dominating thing instead of our flesh. And that's why also all these verses start coming to me where we have, um, where it says, don't be dominant or don't let your flesh, you know, don't let your flesh rule you or, or, um, or even just, yeah, like be led by the spirit. And it's like, oh, I get it. Be led by the spirit because in the spirit, you're never offended. And that was something that um, what happened when, when I was in the spirit, Diego, let's say he would say something or do something and maybe normally I would be like, you know, get annoyed or offended. Nothing bothered me. Not, no, anybody could say anything to me and I didn't care. And then that was realizing that that's in the spirit. In the spirit, you really, you really, it's like, it's this being drunk thing, but you're not, you're not drunk staggering. You're just kind of like, you just don't care. You're, you're not there. That's not who you are. You don't identify with, with these things in the flesh. You just identify with him and what he said about you. And then I realized the Lord was saying like, that's oneness. Like we're in union with him. And so I'm, and he says in the, in the scripture, it says over and over, like, the, we're in the, like Jesus said, I'm in the Father, and, and he's in me, and like, and you're in me. So if we're in Jesus, then we're in the Father, there's a oneness there, and that's in spirit. And so, um, so, <laughs> this fly. so um, yeah, so in this oneness, in this union, we identify with that, then nothing else starts to matter. But the funny thing is it doesn't happen here. Nothing happens here. This, is, this was all religion, how I grew up. I learned, I, I know a lot of verses, I know a lot of this stuff. I could teach a lot from here, but in the end, this stuff, it doesn't have an anointing and the power. It's just, it's just like words. But when it comes from here, when God does things in here, and then you start sharing from your heart, you know, when you have a testimony, and God has given you a testimony, then you start sharing from your heart, and then it's like, whoa, and then other people get like, get like impacted it's because it's coming from here if you're speaking from here it can't really do much it usually can maybe bring some judgment but it won't bring freedom but when you have stuff that happens in your heart and you share from that point and what god's doing in your heart what he's showing you then that's when things start to move and that's when you just you know and that's in the spirit that's all in the spirit and so so as in this process thing and i that that saturday i woke up at four in the morning i mean i was flying that whole day i mean I was, I didn't care what people thought of me. I ended up, I was feeling better by that day. And I was I just <laughs> approaching people and like talking with freedom and just loving them. Like, I just felt like I just wanted to love everybody. All those people that had hurt me, I was like, God, I want to bless them. I want to bless them. I want to pour into their ministry. I want to like, you know, I, Lord, deliver them, deliver them. And so you start to get a compassion in the spirit because you realize now you're out of, identifying your old self now you're identifying with your new self which is jesus you're in jesus and he's in you and so um yeah there's a whole nother there's a whole nother world when you enter in that and and i realized like lord just saying like that's surrender like you surrender and then there's joy and thankfulness and then you realize that's nothing to do with you it's just him it's just his grace and his and it's just his grace and then you also grace starts to take on a new word because it's or a new new d definition because you realize oh before I was living in law. So I was judging those people. Oh, those people are mean to me. They didn't do this to me. They did this. And you start to judge them and there's, and you begin to feel like you're better than them, right? When you start to think, when you start feeling like I'm better than those people or you're, um, you know, they're doing, and you're saying what's good and bad, good and bad, good and bad, that's the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And if you're gonna eat of that tree, what did it bring? It brings death. But when you move into the spirit and you realize oh, you just surrender everything, God, however you want to come to me, however you want it to be, however, like just, it's often not the way you think it is. It's often not the way you think it is. And you surrender that and then all of a sudden everything starts to change because now he's the Lord, not just your savior, but your Lord. And I think receiving and surrender. And so as, as I've gone on, I've just felt like the Lord's been saying to me like, you know, you have a bad day and, and then you want to can go into like condemnation on yourself, right? Or you feel bad. And he's like, no, that's not, that's not where you live anymore. And he's like, I'm the one that brings, I, I give you grace and you're in me. And he just, he wants to just constantly remind us. But like, even in, even like, even after these, this amazing days I was having 
and then I would go, you know, have a bad day, and he would be like, but even that is my grace, because I'm showing you that it's not about you. You can't strive and stay there, and, you know, Holy Spirit's a gift, and his grace is a gift. And so, but I, I was reading yesterday, I've been like, there's so many incredibly amazing verses, but I wanted to read this, read this to you because what was funny was, I read this yesterday and I felt like the Lord was um, <coughs> giving me exactly the scripture of what happened to me, but he was saying it in Philippians. So I'm just gonna read through this. And I might just jump around a bit, but I'm starting on, um, I'm starting, sorry, my eyes are not so good anymore. <laughs> I don't know what, I can't even see what verse that is. Everyone's three, but then I'm gonna jump from three, I'm gonna jump over to verse uh, eight, I believe. So it says here, um, and, and that's Philippians three. So, and we worship God in the power and freedom of the Holy Spirit, not in laws and religious duties. We are those who boast in what Jesus Christ has done and not in what we can accomplish in our own strength. And so, um, uh, sorry, I just before I go on to verse eight, um, I, I should go back a bit. So in this whole struggle of, you know, these people saying these things and, and my friends saying these are distractions, he was telling me over and over, um, he was telling me eyes on him, like get your eyes on me. Um, and it didn't matter where I read, if I read the Bible, if I read a devotional, if I read a different book, um, you know, I have a stack of books, I'm like kind of go a little bit here, a little bit there, verses. Um, it didn't matter where I read, online, whatever it was, it was he was constantly telling me the same message since about February, March, and it was eyes on me, eyes on me. And, and I realized, and when my friend said <laughs> distraction, it's like all these things, you know, even good things can be distraction, right? Anything but the bad stuff, the good stuff, everything, if it gets my eyes off of him, then I start to go down a different path. But when my eyes are on him, there's just like a, a whole nother, a whole nother realm. And so, but, and then he said to me over those months too, I remember him whispering, but I would kind of ignore it. It was like, do you want me or do you want ministry? And that ministry is the good, right? That knowledge of good and evil is like doing good stuff. He's like, do you want that or do you want me? And I kind of was like, oh, like whatever, like whatever. Like, yeah, I want you, I want both, you know, you know. And then, but he kept putting that until finally that morning um, when I had that encounter with the Lord, and that's when I, because, yeah, that's when I just felt like I surrendered and I said, God, I want you more than anything, more than ministry, more than um, whatever it is. I don't care. I just don't care what people say anymore. I don't care, um, you know, what mission that we, you know, what it looks like. I just want you. And so then I read Philippians here. And this is, this is really like, I mean, even though Paul is, he's talking about his own credentials as in a, being a, um, what do you call it, an Orthodox Jew of, of the highest rank kind of thing, so obviously that's not me. But same idea of just letting things go, and it says here in verse eight, to truly know him meant letting go of everything from my past and throwing all my boasting in, on the garbage heap. It's all like a pile of manure to me now, so that, I'm, so that I may be enriched in the reality of knowing Jesus Christ and embrace him as Lord. It's in all of his greatness. And I just, and I'll keep going, but it's just, I feel like he's just saying, it's about me. It's about Jesus. It's not about you and what you're doing. It's about me. And so um, my passion is to be, so this is next verse nine. My passion is to be consumed with him and not cling to my own righteousness, right? Or good works based in keeping the written law. My only righteousness will be his based on the faithfulness of Jesus Christ the very righteousness that comes from God. And I continually long to know the wonders of Jesus and to experience the overflowing power of his resurrection working in me. And I, I, I just love that. It's like, I just, that's, that's my, where I'm at. I'm like, I just want to know more of Jesus. It's him. It's not about what I do here. It's not about anything. It's just him. It's just him from now and all eternity. And it says here, I will be one with him in his sufferings and, and become like him in his death. Only then will I be able to experience complete oneness with him in his resurrection from the realm of death. I admit that I, have, I admit that I haven't yet acquired the absolute fullness that I'm pursuing, but I run with passion into his abundance so that I may reach the purpose for which 
Christ Jesus laid a hold of me to make me his own. I don't depend on my own strength to accomplish this. However, I do have one compelling focus. I forget all of the past as I fasten my heart to the future instead. And um, yeah, so I just felt like that was my passion. It's just like, I just want him and all that he has for me. And, um, and I feel like, and then if I just jump into four, this is my heart <coughs> for all of us. It says here um, in chapter four, it says here, now arise in the fullness of your union with, with our Lord. And then it says here, jumping over from chapter four to, to verse six, I believe. Don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. You know, be saturated in prayer throughout each day, offering your faithful request before God with overflowing gratitude. Tell him every detail of your life. Um, and then it says, keep your thoughts continually fixed on all that is authentic and real, honorable and admirable, beautiful and respectful, pure and holy, merciful and kind, and fasten your thoughts on every glorious work of God, praising him always. And I, I feel like that's what he's been saying to me, is just on me, on me, on what I'm doing. If I'm looking anywhere else, oh man, I will get depressed, I will get offended, I will get all these things. But as I just see on him and I just receive and I say, thank you, Father, that you're enough and, and that I'm in you and there's nothing left for me to do to impress you or, or to get anywhere with you. You've already paid the price, done, done it all, and, and it's just me, us, walking that out and just receiving and there's always more like it never ends right it's always more and so um and then i just want to jump over to colossians i just i just love colossians so much um first of all it says here in in colossians 2 verse 6 it says in the same way you receive jesus our lord and messiah by faith continue your journey of faith <coughs> progressing further into your union with him and i love that because it's 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 the same way you received him, so walk in him. So how do we receive him? We didn't do anything. So how do we walk in him? We don't have to do anything. We just literally receive from him. We're like literally receiving. The Israelites picking up manna every day, um, you know, in the desert, they were just receiving from him. He was, he was, he was giving them everything they needed nutritionally. And um, so it's enough. And I think the lie is that he's not enough or that I'm, or that I'm missing something. There's a lack. And that was the lie in the, the, the Garden of Eden. Um, was that there, you know, when the serpent come, came and he said, like, basically it was, that's not enough. It's not enough. You lack. You don't have this. You don't have that. And I want to say to you that that's, that's exactly what the enemy will always try and do is that, and it will come in many different distractions, and it will say, you're not enough, it's not enough, you don't have this, you don't have that. Look at what you just did this morning. Look at what that person said of you. Look at the, like, it'll just try and distract you. But if you just go, no eyes on him, he said this about me, and he said it, I, I am enough, and he is enough. And then you, you grab a hold of, of, that's the abundance of just him, it's enough. There's nothing left for you to do. Um, I'll just end off with this. So in... Back in 2010, um, I had a dream, and it, I don't, I have a lot of dreams, but these ones, I know when they're prophetic, because they are so vivid, and I will never forget them. It's like very, very, very clear as day, and I can still remember every single detail. And part of the dream, I won't get into all of it, but part of the dream was um, I was in a community in the forest, and this lady was, we had ran there, me and Diego were running there and for safety, and we got there and there was a lady and she was, she was cooking and she was chopping up food and there was this beautiful community and, the, and it was very loving. I remember like the love was so, so welcoming and so strong and she was making food and, and um, I said, oh, can I help you? You know, like, can I help you? What can I do? Like, if you're, if you're serving me and I'm, <coughs> I'm eating your food and we're like mooching off of you, like, I'll do something to contribute, right? And, and she just said to me, she goes, and it was, it was like God himself saying it to me. He goes, you don't have to do anything. And I remember just being like, I don't have to do anything. Like, I have to do at least something, something to contribute. Because to, I'm eating your food and I'm, I'm in your community. And, and, you know, she's like, you don't have to do anything. And I sat down and I remember just feeling like, it was so overwhelming. And then I woke up from the dream and 
it was like I was in heaven, and then all of a sudden I was like, oh, I'm here on earth. But the, 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 the freedom and the joy of going, I don't have to do anything, that is the biggest, that is gonna, that is gonna go against every religious spirit out there because where, even where we're from and you know, we go to a church that you know, loves Jesus and all that stuff, but when I tell them that, I will 99% of the time, I will go, but you have to do your part. That's always the line, but you have to do your part. And I'm like, what's my part? They don't really know. And I said, my part is to believe. It's to believe. That's it. You're just receiving and believing what he's already done. There's not one thing extra you can contribute. You don't have to do your part. Your only part is believing and receiving. And like what I did in that dream, and I just sat down and I just received. I re and it's so hard to receive and do nothing. You know how hard that is? It's way easier to do something. Way easier. Because you feel like, oh, I feel better now. I'm chopping up, I'm helping. Okay, now I don't feel so bad. The hardest thing is sitting and just receiving and not doing one thing. But that is the glorious spot ever. And you know what? Not many people will like that. They don't like that because that just is, seems so like, well, you can't do that, you can't do that, you can't do that. But I, trust me, I just, that's my prayer is like the revelation of that we don't have to do anything, that we are one with him and we, didn't, we can't do anything to receive it or like to, to get salvation and we can't do anything to maintain it. It's all him from receiving to maintaining all the way he's the author and finisher of your faith. He doesn't author it and then you finish it. He authors it and he finishes it. So I just, yeah, that's my heart for you guys and I'm just, maybe I'm probably preaching to the choir, but just wanted to share that. Thank you very much. You bet.